And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Funny. Yes. Are you ready for another exciting installment of Bunny Versus? Are you ready? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Are you jazzed? Are you psyched? Are you primed? Are you amped up? Are you hyped? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to do it? Are, are you revved up? Are, are you keyed up? Are you queued up? Are you ready to do it? I am. Hell yeah! Well, without any further ado, it's time once again for Bunny Versus. And now here is your host, Bunny Williams, take it away, Bunny! So what'd you think? <laughs> I liked it. I liked huh? it a lot. When I, I didn't hear the beginning, but when I did start hearing it, I really liked it. I, I, I really warmed to Jeannie's voice. At, when I first created it, the idea was, what I wanted was for QAnon Karen to sound exactly like Dora. So I was doing a Dora accent, a Dora the Explorer accent. Yeah. Kids, do you see socialism? But I've really come to like Jeannie's voice. It's really perfect for that character. Yeah. Set up like that. I really like it. It's really good. Good. Thank you. I, keep, Thank I, you. Kept, I kept staring at the eyes, and they kept moving in this way that really freaked the shit out of me. <laughs> it, 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 the eye kept getting dragged a little bit and I just kept staring yeah yeah it was good I liked it but but let's get directly to the horse in the room okay okay Joe Rogan sucks cock Joe Rogan is a cocksucker in more ways than one. Yeah. See, now, now, but now I thought about this. And first, the first thing that comes to, to my mind is like, picture it's not true. You know. And then, second, in fact, I think I want this as a live broadcast somewhere. I feel that Joe Rogan is too much of a thick boy to actually reach. I feel that you need to be taller and skinnier. Willy Wonka definitely can do that to himself. I don't think Joe Rogan can. Well, I feel like this would be an historic event, okay? And that years after, like 20 years in the future, like... If we have one, of course. Yeah. Big if. What, what, now, when you say anything in the future, you, you kind of just have to giggle a little. Oh. <laughs> but like 20 years in the future, you could turn to any stranger and say, Hey, you remember that time Joe Rogan sucked his own cock? And you would instantly be friends. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and I think that like in more like a hundred years, or maybe like a hundred and fifty, closer to two hundred, it of course would evolve and shorten to become the standard greeting. So like in the future, you would not say hello to someone. You would say Joe Joe Rogan's cop. Yeah. That's the way. That's the way that people greet each other. Hey, and did you know might that? Say, and a mighty fine Joe Rogan's cock to you too. Hey, Vin Diesel has a twin it's brother. Like a holiday. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you. That's how. That's another way to greet people. Vin Diesel has a twin brother. You know. So like. So like. You further in the future, like when the Vulcans actually land. You know. And it's this whole big ceremony, you know, and they're coming out with gifts and the humans are coming up with gifts and they say live long and prosper and the humans look at them and they bow their heads solemnly and hold out a pillow with a pickle on it and say, 
Joe Rogan's cock. I just feel that Joe Rogan is too much of a big, hearty, thick boy in order to actually reach his nether regions with his mouth. If you told me Timothy Chaomlet could do that, I would, I would be like, oh, yeah, absolutely. He could definitely do that to himself. You say Joe Rogan, and it's like, ah, uh, I need some fucking proof. Yeah, man, but, but, like, at the same time, like, what a weird lie to come out with. <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, um, I, mean, like, I actually this like... This anywhere. This was in Variety, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. I like the, I, I like the fact that Joe it's Rogan like says that because... <laughs> Before Joe Rogan came out and said that, I specifically, anytime someone gave me COVID advice, it's like, hey, you should be washing your hands and not touching your face and staying six feet apart. I would say, I'm not sure if I should trust your medical advice. Can you suck your own dick? Yeah. And if they said no, it, it, I can't. And it's like, well, why should I be listening to your medical advice then? So kudos to Joe Rogan. It's like, hey, I'm taking horse dewormer, and I can suck it. It's like, okay, <laughs> there you go. I'm going to listen to your medical advice. Yes. I, I just think that it is an event that can be just world-changing, you know? <coughs> <coughs> so everything that came... Before this would be considered JC, Joe's cock. You yeah. Know. Like AD. Well, BC, BC before and... cock. Yeah. I like that. I'm and down with that. AD after he comes. After I'm not Dick. sure what. What? After Dick. After Dick. Thank you. After Dick. That's perfect. Nice. Yeah. Anno Dickening, I think, is what it would be in Latin. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, well, you kind of did how you're do how you're doing. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm. Do you have anything to add? <laughs> yeah. So I went to the movies as a woman for the first time ever, and it was scary as fuck. It, I also went to the bathroom as a woman for the first time ever, and that was scary as fuck. Uh. I went back to the bookstore for the first time ever as a woman, and that was scary as fuck. And I was so excited and so high just to finally get to the point where I felt like a woman for the first time ever that as I'm driving home, <coughs> my wife texts me and says, hey, I need to go to the store. I need to go to a couple of places. I need to go to Walmart. I need to go to wherever. Do you want to come with me? If you want, you can stay in the car. You don't have to come in. But I was so high from all of the like firsts that I have that I just I just got bold and went, fuck it. I'm coming to the store with you. And I it, the way that I saw it was like I've done so many, I've jumped off so many cliffs today that now at the end of the day, I've reached the boss level. Going to the Walmart in my small, bigoted, racist town as a woman. Yeah. This is the boss. This is Bowser. And so we pulled up into the parking lot of the Walmart, and I am freaking out like my chest hurts. My spine is on fire. I'm, like, hyperventilating. And also, I'm wearing my, 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 my jean vest, and it says pride in big letters on it, and it's got, like, a rainbow flag, and... and and I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. I, I don't know if I can do this at all. I'm going to not wear the vest. I'm not going to do this. And, and, and my wife, God bless her, would bless her, just said, like, I'll, I'll hold your hand the whole time and this and that. And so I did it. I went inside of Walmart in my small ass town as a woman. And it was the scariest fucking goddamn thing that I've ever done. But I did it. And I'm proud. And I even talked to people. There was one time. We were checking out the toys, and Natasha said, oh, damn it, I forgot, I have to go get this thing. Do you want to come with me? And I said, no, you go, I'll stay here. And Natasha's like, are you sure? Leaving you alone inside of this Walmart? And I'm like, yeah, I got it, you go. 
So Natasha left me and I was there all alone just as a woman in the Walmart in my small ass town. And I'm going down the aisle and there's an old white couple in front of me that's taking up the entire aisle. And I'm like, shit, I need to get them to move. In order to do that, I need to talk to them. I've got a female voice. It's the same thing. I just try and soften it. Yeah. This is my female voice. I think it's okay, but also I've never fully worked on it. And also, if you can tell, it's quiet as fuck. Yeah. I, I don't have the volume on it yet, so it's like, shit. Like, I need to talk to people to get them to move, but I'm just scared to do it. And, and then that was like the last cliff I had to jump off of yesterday. And I'm like, excuse me, can, can I just really quickly get through? And they're like, oh, sorry. Sorry, ma'am. And I'm like, oh, it's okay. And I move. And it's just like, it's such an exhilarating feeling to finally just be out and to be who you are. And yeah, so then today, like I woke up like the first time that like I... I spent most of the day as a woman and then went to bed as a woman and then woke up as a woman. And so I was spending time with the kids and Eleanor loves other mother. Oh my God. My five-year-old must have drawn me, I think three or four times today. Yeah. Other mother, can I draw you? You just drew me. I just want to draw you again. I love you so much. And they're cuddling on me and, and just, Oh, Eleanor loves other mother. And so, uh, Natasha said, hey, do you want to get McDonald's for the kids? Sure. And I dressed up as a woman and it was just automatic. And I went to McDonald's and, and I, I got food for the kids as a woman. And while I'm waiting for the food, I thought, oh, you know what? I should stop at the store and get some strawberries for the kids because they've been eating strawberries like they're going out of style. But then I'm like, oh, I can't do it because I'm a woman. But that's when it hit me that like this is my opportunity to not be myself. Steve is very scared, hates himself, hates the way he looks. But, like, if I'm going to be a woman, if I'm going to be a different person, fuck, let's get some fucking balls, you know? So I went to the store, to my neighborhood grocery store, as a woman, by myself, gave no fucks. And I'm just, I'm, I'm really fucking proud of myself. And also, uh, I still have the male me inside of me i still have steve inside of me so if someone does give me shit i can get violent in a moment's fucking notice yeah if i need to so but i haven't needed to it, it it's difficult for me because because the guy me does this all the time but it's difficult as female me to just not see how everyone is looking at me yeah. But once you just once you just learn you okay, baby? Yeah. Oh my god. It, are you choking? Are you choking? Nah, she's just coughing. Okay, good. Uh, I don't know the Heimlich. Once you get once you stop looking at everyone and just focus on yourself and what you have to do, yeah. then it's pretty easy to be a woman. I think Natasha and I are going to the store to get an sugar after the podcast and like i'm totally fine with that i'm i'm becoming more comfortable as who i am uh other mother might take uh eleanor to school tomorrow yeah because i was thinking about it i'm like how long can i be a woman <laughs> this time well i have to be a guy to take eleanor to school because all of the parents are there and they'll look at me funny but then i realize like none of the parents talk to me none of the parents know who the fuck i am why should I give a shit what these fucking white parents think of me? I can dress however the fuck I want. So I think uh, other mother might take my, <coughs> take my kids to school tomorrow. And that's, that's really exciting. My next big step, though, is I want to do story time as a woman. Yeah. And I was like, how do I do that, though? And then I came up with, with, with the hook. This is the hook. And I'm like, uh, hello, hello, everybody. It's me, not Mr. Steve. 
and it's time for another story time. You might be wondering, gee, where is Mr. Steve? He can't be here. I'm going to do story time for him. And I think you'll find that we are a lot alike. And then I just do a regular story time, but with a slightly more feminine voice and just do it a normal way. And then the next story time, I can just be Steve and be like, hello, it's me, Mr. Steve. Did you like the last story time? We had a special guest. I really liked it. I think she'll be appearing more often at story time. And I can do story time as both people. And I'm really excited about that idea. Yeah. Because if I treat them as two separate individuals, I think I can get away with being a YouTube channel that is also gender fluid. Yeah. I think I can find a way to make a to do a gender fluid LGBTQIA positive channel while also getting away with it. You know? Yes. Also, you need to um, be okay with the fact that they're going to see that as a character as opposed to gender fluidity. Yeah, but I feel that I feel that that's just for the beginning, and then eventually I can like I can slowly go towards that. I absolutely cannot. I do not have the nails right now. My nails are actually pretty short. Uh, Bunny, I wanted to talk to you about something. Yes. I got a text, and I'm, I'm really proud of this. Okay, so there's a scam going on where you get texts from a bot who pretends to be a woman, and you get texts from a bot that pretends to be a woman who accidentally texted you, and you're not really texting a person, you're just texting like a, a scam robot that tries to get you to join this adult website and, yeah. and asks you these personal questions to try and get information off of you. It's all a big scam. And, and I had heard about it during the summer and I'm like, oh man, I wish I could get that to happen to me. So I finally got the text a couple of days ago. And, and so, uh, so this is the text I received. Hey, are you Ruben? This is Maria. We talked on POF last time I went up to see my cousin, but we didn't meet in person. I back, I'm back in town for a little bit if you wanted to really go out this time. Are you up to it? Smiley face emoji. And I was so excited, like, this is my chance. So I, so I, texted, I texted Maria back. Uh, hello, Maria, this is Ruben. I have recently been bitten by a werewolf. I can definitely go out as long as it's not a full moon. I am being very serious. I am wearing black socks, which proves how serious I am. So she texted back, golly, did I just accidentally text some random dude? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I could be stupid occasionally laughing emoji and then sent me a uh, selfie of herself, which is obviously some picture from some adult site that's just been cropped. So I put, so I texted her back, no, it's me, Ruben, I'll send you a picture. And I sent a gif of a werewolf attacking someone because okay. Ruben is a werewolf. So then I, so then I decided to try and, oh no, the villagers have kidnapped me, Maria, my love. They say the only way to secure my freedom is for you to send 8,000 Bitcoin. Please, Maria, save me your darling Reuben and send the Bitcoin. They're already sharpening wooden stakes. It was all day. It was <laughs> all day. And it was incredible. My darling Maria, I have escaped the villagers, but I have now been kidnapped by government agents. They say they will perform hideous experiments on me unless you send 8,500 Bitcoin. Please save me, obviously, real Maria. And I just kept, thank you for not being ticked off. I guess not all men are dicks that give out wrong numbers. Ha, ha, ha. Want to talk? What's your name? I told you, Maria, my name is Ruben and I am a werewolf. And I feast on your dead grandfather's corpse and also baby belt cheese because they are yummy. My, I love Satan and also scrapbooking. I only date women who know what a Cleveland steamer is and are willing to do it to me in the ball pit of a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Awesome. Lovely to meet you. Thanks for being cool. What sort of hobbies do you do for fun? Well, I usually just slaughter puppies and shit on your dead mother's face. So, you know, the usual stuff. Tell me something about you, Maria. Like, what's your social security number and your mother's maiden name? And can I send you a link to my poetry? And then I sent her the entire B-movie script. <laughs> 
And it was just all day, and it was so much fun. Maria, I have been stabbed in the heart with a wooden stake covered in garlic, which, as everyone knows, is fatal for werewolves. But I texted wrong, so I put, which, as everyone knows, is fat for werewolves. Yeah, I posted yeah. the whole thing on Twitter. It, it, I'm only doing, like, the, my favorite bits. I fear I am not long for this world, so I must tell you one final thing. If you send me a picture of your puckered-up asshole, I will send you $1,000. So then it, it, it became this whole massive thing, and then eventually she sent me a nude picture of herself, again, which was obviously just taken from some adult website, so I texted her back. Uh, I do not care. I am gay. I am a gay werewolf. So much fun. And it's like, <laughs> oh, this is supposed to be a scam. But I tried to scam the scammers. And it's like, oh, they got nothing personal from me. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and then I posted on Twitter and people started like doing like fanfic for it. And someone, someone gave her the name Maria Totes Reel. Okay, okay. And then everyone on Twitter started talking about Maria Totes Reel and Ruben the Vampire. Like, oh, uh, a love made for the ages. Yes. You know? So I just want to say thank you to Maria Totes Reel, who is obviously out there somewhere just waiting for me, you know? Well, not waiting for me, waiting for Ruben the werewolf. So uh, that, was, that was one of the proudest moments of the week for me. Really shows I got some free time. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So anyway, that's my week. Uh, what about you, Bunny? How are you? What about me is I really got to pee, so I want to get over to break. <laughs> yes. So I can make that happen. So okay. My bladder is literally asking me, and I must answer. And the only possible answer is yes. self-adhesive tape? Yes, please. And, and cut, on, cut that. on that. We will be right